So a few weeks ago, a, a new landscape photographer was asking me about panoramic photography using a smartphone. And I thought, that would be a great topic. I mean, I'm on this iPhone kick, and I have been since I'm getting an iPhone 13 Pro Max. And I've been pushing the phone already, shooting in RAW. I'm thinking, why not try some panoramic photography on the iPhone in the RAW format? So that's what we're going to talk about this week. Um, so I went out this morning for sunrise and I, I did just that. I set up and I shot uh, panoramic uh, imagery with my iPhone in the RAW format. I haven't done anything with these images yet, so we'll go through the whole process, process of downloading them, importing them, stitching them, maybe a little quick processing. Um, I visited a um, one of my uh, go-to places here in town. So the, the imagery isn't spectacular, but that's okay. This is more about the exercise and having a little fun with this. But I do want to talk about why why would you do this? You know, I mean, you have the, the built-in native software for, you know, either Android or iPhone. You know, you basically, you start at a point and you just sort of pan your camera and it's just magically stitching everything together and giving you a panorama. Now, for one, that's not in RAW. Uh, and for two, there are some uh, some limitations where you're not in full control of of what the phone is creating. I'm somewhat a I'm somewhat of a nerd when it comes to brackets and uh, mounts, and camera, small camera accessory gear, that sort of thing. Uh, you know quarter 20s, 3 8 16 and, and nuts and bolts and everything. I, I love taking all this stuff apart and just making new stuff out of it, or just sort of fabricating my own my own little concoctions. And uh, and I had to do that for this shoot. So I, I have, uh, there's actually two phone brackets here. Now this one I just bought uh, last week on Amazon. And I, I have to tell you, it's, it's one of these no-name knockoffs. And I think I paid like 20 bucks for it, but I, I Sometimes you get lucky, and I I love a metal. I love all types of different metals, stainless steels, aluminum. I don't know. I just got a thing for it, you know. And so even if I'm buying the the knockoff brands, I always try and find one that just sort of uh, jazzes me up. And uh, it's hit or miss. Sometimes you buy these, and they're they're garbage. You, you kind of know what you're what you're getting. But so far for 20 bucks, I'm pretty impressed with this uh, this guy here. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm rambling here. So I, I took this guy. I had to go to Home Depot buy some stainless hardware. I had this guy, and I, uh, I just wanted to mount them together because this guy that I just bought has a Arca Swiss mount that will just mount right into the top of my tripod. And by doing that, I now have a portrait orientation for my phone. So my phone will go into here. And with this mounted on the Arca, I can now um, shoot in the, uh, the, you know, the portrait orientation. Now, unfortunately, this did not come with me this morning. And that wasn't by choice, because I forgot it. I was in my basement. I was sort of coming up with the idea. I had already bought the hardware at Home Depot. And it sort of got left behind this morning. So fortunately I did have my DJI Osmo gimbal on me and that's what I had to use. And I really wanted to make the video with this so that if this if it's something you're going to try, you have parts that are that are more accessible. So I may just set this up and we could do this in studio just so we can kind of get an idea of what it's like. But the, the field work, um, you're gonna see the, the the DJI Osmo in action. And it worked, it worked fine, it was great. Uh, but I would still have preferred to just manually be, con be, be at the helm and, and, and controlling things. I really like that um, having those precise pre precise movements and, and being in a little bit more control. So this is my little uh, concoction in action. Unfortunately, uh, it didn't make it for this morning's shoot because I left it home and forgot it. But it's pretty neat. Normally you'd put your phone in here, but uh, just by adding on a piece on the back, I can now just sort of line this up shoot just shoot just shoot so that works out really nice um, if you don't have something like this you, know, you could simply you, I mean, you can hand hold if you had to depending on uh, the circumstances and the light but uh, you can you can as a worst case scenario just if your ball head has the 90 degree and you, know, you could put that in here like that 
then you can mount your phone inside here like this and you can go ahead and, and do the panel like this. Not the best or optimal way to do it. Works in a pinch. Anyway, I am babbling here. So let's, um, let's wrap this up and let's get out into the field and uh, see how this works. And then we'll come back. We'll go through importing these, stitching them together, maybe some quick processing and uh, some of the benefits of um, why this could be fun and why this can be uh, beneficial and, um, and why you can walk away with pretty decent images shooting in RAW with your phone. So let's go. So we want to level off our tripod here with a bubble level. And by doing that, when we when we go to pan, the tripod is already on level ground, so when we pan it, we have to we have to level the top too. <clears throat> and then we can go ahead and pan this and we'll have a level horizon. So let me get that set up and the gimbal in this case will help with that. Normally I wouldn't use this type of setup, but it's all I have right now. So that's what we're going to use. All right. Make sure that's level as I pan across. That's not too bad. I'm using uh, Adobe Lightroom's can uh, Adobe Lightroom app with the built-in camera. Two-second timer. We're shooting in RAW, and we are going to snap a photo. That's it. All right. Now we have our grids up on here. We are going to go ahead and shift the camera over and line up the next portion. The next. We want to overlap our thirds. So as I pan this, this way, I want to take whatever I have in this segment right here. So I'm going to use the, <clears throat> as a reference, I have the sun here, but I got these, these, in, these clouds and the reflection of the clouds coming down to a, to a point. I'm going to use that as my reference and place that at the next grid over here. So I'll go this way. And now I have them shifted over about a third. That's about what we want here. Take another picture. I should also mention here before I take my picture that my white balance is set to sunny. You want to have your white balance locked in, not on auto. If your white balance is on auto, you may get undesirable results from each separate image of your panel, which can cause problems when attempting to stitch the images later on. On the iPhone, you can't change white balance with the native camera app. However, third-party apps like Adobe Lightroom Mobile will allow you to lock your white balance. That said, if you're using the native camera app, it usually does a good job managing the white balance. So we've leveled off and locked in our preferred white balance. We've set a two-second timer to reduce camera shake. Now, even though our shutter speed is high here, it helps to keep the images aligned. When you press on the screen, you're essentially tilting the phone while making the image, so using a timer is just a good habit. Now we're ready to start overlapping our images. 
identify a spot on the right third of your image alongside this axis here. Now make your image with the two second timer not touching the phone. Continue this process until you have your desired results or the composition you had in mind. But also keep in mind that you may want to make a few extra frames at the end. It's just uh, sort of a safety net and um, sometimes compositions um, are hard to imagine until the images are stitched. So more is better in this case. Okay, so that's a wrap. What did you guys think? You going to go out and give this a shot? I mean, come on, this is a lot of fun, isn't it? This is something you would not ordinarily do with your smartphone. Uh, so it's, it's quite a blast. So let me know. If you have some fun with it, uh, leave your comments below. If you're liking these, go ahead and smash that like button and, and subscribe. If not, okay, that's fine too. But if you're still here, thanks for watching. And get out there and shoot more shoot 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 go in peace be kind to one another and keep making beautiful images to share with the world all right i'll see you next week